Anything is possible. It started with a dream. Hello and welcome back to another video from Sandra at Sandra's Stamp and Craft Studio. Today we are bringing you um, another video using the Dragonfly Garden bundle as I share a series of videos with some of my demonstrator colleagues for our April suite of the month featuring the Dragonfly bundle. Remember that buying the two purchases together, the stamp and the punch, that you will be able to save a 10% discount. Now let's get down to the craft table and see my next project. Just to quickly recap, we're using the Dragonfly Garden stamp set together with the Dragonfly Builder Punch. So today we are going to start by cutting one of our sheets of cardstock in half. Now, depending on which market you're in, if you're in the UK, then our metric size, we will be cutting downwards at 10 and a half centimeters. If that you are in the US, your standard size is eight and a half inches by 11 inches. So you will be cutting down the center at four and a quarter. And then when we're scoring this the other way, so for us, it's 14.85 in the metric. And for the US market, it will be five and a half inches. I'll score that and take the trimmer away. So I'll fold this in half along that score line and then just burnish with my bone folder. Okay, so there's my base card. I've cut two more layers of card, one in basic black and the measurements for this were seven and a half centimetres by eleven and a half centimetres or three inches by four and a half inches. And then I will be adding a basic white layer and this measures seven centimetres by 11 centimetres. Now I'm going to be decorating this panel first, so I'll set those aside. So with my white layer, I'm just placing a piece of scrap paper underneath. Next, I'm going to use my oval builder punch here, my duo oval, and I'm going to punch out a couple of the scallopy ones. I like to use my Tombow multi-purpose adhesive and I'm just going to overlap these very slightly with a little bit of Tombow and just overlap them to make some clouds. I'm going to use this as a template to make some clouds. So I have one of my blending brushes and my pool party ink. I wanted quite a pale shade of blue. So taking my template again, I've used this one once already. I'm just going to go gently along those edges, taking this excess off on the scrap paper if it's slightly darker shade until you get the shade you want. And I'm using circular motions, both, both forwards, clockwise and anti-clockwise. If you don't start off the card first you will find you'll get a little bit splodges like that one it's a little bit darker than I because I forgot on that one but that's going to be covered by the flowers anyway you'll want to make sure you bring that down about two-thirds or three-quarters of the way down your card so bring that up to the camera so you can see how the, the clouds look it's very pale and I have got shadows from my camera above me so apologies for that if you wanted, you could do, use go into with darker colours and come in from the top a little bit darker. But I'm happy with that one at the moment. So now I'm going to take my, my Wild Meadows, the um, flower stamp here, and I'm going to ink this up and stamp this. I turn it on its side. I want the stems to be just off the bottom here so they're not floating in the air and I want most of those flowers visible on the card. So that's going to be matted onto my card, onto here, and then that will go in the centre of that card like so. So you can see that the flowers on there and the clouds in the background. 
Now I'm going to bring my card back on minus the black layer and I'm going to be leave it on the scrap paper because I'm going to be stamping off the edges. I'm going to place that roughly in the centre where it's going to go. I'm taking my Bumblebee ink pad and my small cluster of little dragonflies. So rather than stretch over, I'll pop that out of the way. So the reason I've got a, a, a gap between here, when these go off the edge of a card, when you stamp, you will get a little bit of a shadow. But when I put the black layer back underneath, it will cover that shadow. So that's the reason I'm doing it like this. So it's roughly in the centre where it's going to sit. So I'm going to tap this gently. And I want these to come just off the edge of the card. So you'll have some on the actual card, but some coming off the edges like so. I'm going to stamp these ones off because these are further in the distance and I'm going to have some more coming through on here. When this is stamped on the same colour ink and card, it will give you like a watermark. So I wanted that to be a bit bolder, but on the card I wanted to be a bit softer. So because I want to give the idea of this um, flowing through, I'm going to stamp this one on this corner off here neat okay so that's kind of fluttering through then stamp the whole thing again stamp it off on your scrap paper and then have another little piece just coming through up here it's just a little bit of delicate because it just had a little gap there so I'm now going to stick these two layers together again with my Tombow adhesive And I'll place that on there, like so. So that's going to form the basis of our card. So I'm going to set this aside for one moment. And I'm going to bring on my Stamparatus. We don't currently have a black embossing powder. However, the embossing powders are coming back in the new annual catalogue. But they will be in threes, they will be in trios. So I can tell you that we will be having. One trio will be basics, will be black, clear and white. So the black is coming back. And the metallics will be copper, gold and silver. So that's, that will be coming back. In the meantime, I'm going to show you how we can emboss this in, we're using clear embossing powder with black ink to make it look like it's embossed. So I'm placing my piece of vellum inside the Stamparatus and securing with my magnets. I'm going to position my dragonfly where I'd like that to sit. Bearing in mind I'll have to come in from the bottom with my punch and I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to stamp this with the black ink. Stamp a second go. Stamp that again. And then very quickly, I will have my piece of um, grid paper folded in half to capture my clear embossing powder. I'll remove that, hold this on the paper and sprinkle with my clear embossing powder. Because the vellum is a shiny surface, the black ink on here will remain wet, so the powder will stick to that. So I'm now going to use my heat tool. I'm bring that up to the camera. Hopefully, you can see how that is is glossy. It's made the black stronger and it is all glossy. Very pretty. So now I'm going to wait a few moments just for that to cool down and then I will place this back in my Stamparatus and then walk my image down to two, two posts. Okay and then we're going to repeat it all over again. So I'm going to repeat this twice more to make three vellum 
dragonflies. To colour our dragonflies, we're going to colour from the reverse. So I'm going to turn these over onto a piece of white paper so you can see the colours I'm doing. And we're just going to try and keep within the lines, but just colour, add some colour to the, the wings. So here I'm using a, the Misty Moonlight. So we've got some blue, blue shading from the centre. and then blend outwards with one of the greens, the old olive. We can blend those two coming in together. Just merging those where the edges, where they come in together. I'm going to turn that over. The green is not very dark, so I'm going to use the dark Granny Apple Green. It's all trial and error, just colouring from the back just to see how that's going to look through there. Vellum is very translucent, so we're trying to bring out the depth of colour. So the dark Granny Apple Green is looking good. Just on the outsides of those wings. There we go. And then I think I'll go back to the dark misty moonlight as well. Just try to blend those in. There we go, and we'll see what that looks like. Now that looks better, that's going to dry nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and do the others exactly the same. There we go, you can see where the, the colours are blending. So now using my um, Dragonfly Builder Punch, and from the front of the card where we're going to see it, I'm going to line up my punch. I'm actually using the whole image, but in half of the, the smaller element here at the bottom. There's a little one. You can't really see much of the ends on there, but it's, it's there. And another little tip, because I've cut, I've left those a gap between them, but I've got nothing to hold them with. I've cut this, those apart now, and I'm going to take this and stick this onto a post-it note. So the post-it note becomes my handle. There we go. And I'm just using the post-it note to position that where I'd like it to be. So that's a happy accident showing you another tip. So that's in the center, and I'm going to punch that one out. That's perfect. I remove that and put the other one on the same end of the post-it note. So now I have some of our bumblebee gingham ribbon and I'm going to wrap this round and over the other side. So I'm going to put a piece of tear and tape along the back here where I would like to position my ribbon and remove those tabs. So now I'm going to place this across here and bend those ends around the back to stick on my adhesive. Like so, making sure it's nice and straight. And that will simply attach on the back there. Make sure when you're happy with it, it's nice and even. So now that is adhered down, I'm going to put some foam pads on the back. And again, I'm going to be using the Stampin' Up! Black Dimensionals. I like to adhere these down a little bit more, even though the tape is holding them. So I'm going to put a piece on there. And you'll notice as I peel off the backs, that they are actually black on the other side. So they came, come off the sheet and they are black. Now 
Now I like to play with my layout and to see where my dragonflies are going to go. I like to bend this with my tweezers or with your fingernails. So you can either get your tweezers and just bend that up and the tweezers that way and bend it up. So you're flying, your dragonfly is flying, or you can do it with your nails. So you can go either side and bend it with your two thumbnails like so, and it will still be the same. So I'm just gonna play with this and see where I'd like those to be flying. So I've changed the position. I've decided I'm going to place that one there. And these ones, I can have two images like so. Okay, so now I know where I want to place my dragonflies, I need to place my greeting. Just been looking for the stamp and it's on the back of my watch. <laughs> so I decide where I'd like to put my sentiment. I'm going to bring on a piece of Whisper White or Basic White card and my Memento Black Ink Pad. And I'm going to stamp my sentiment. The post-it note trick can also work for sentiments as well when you're trying to hold this and place a piece of card into the centre of that oval, like so. And punch that. And the rest of the post-it note can be used for other greetings the same way. I'm going to take another small piece of sponge and my Bumblebee ink pad. And I'm going to sponge this just down the edges, just lightly. And I wouldn't sponge over your project because sometimes the little fibres can actually splash the ink onto your project. So I'm just holding it over the ink pad. Just to give it a little bit of colour. And there's my sentiment. And again, we'll pop a couple of the dimensions on the back here. Move that piece of post-it note as well. Decide where we'd like to place that. I'm going to tie a bow to beside this as well. So I am actually going to place that in the centre. Like so. And then the dragonflies, one can be off the card there and one was going to be in the white space there. And then lastly, I'd like to just tuck a little piece of the ribbon underneath. And because there's a lot of detail on here, I'm simply going to tie a little knot. I'm not going to make it into a big bow, just a little tiny knot towards the end of the ribbon. Like so. And trim the end and trim the end. Taking care not to cut the dragonfly. And there is my finished card. Okay, so I hope you like that card. Bring that up to the camera for you so you can see all the detail. The dragonflies look translucent on the vellum and the blends are quite strong colours to come through. I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial today and if this is your first visit please click on my subscribe button below so you can be notified of any future videos as I release them. My contact details will all appear at the end of this video and also in the description below. Thanks again for joining me and I hope to see you again here soon.